Tibor was born in 1931 in Arad, which is now in Western Romania. It was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It became Romania after the First World War. His mom was a homemaker and took care of the boys. Their father had a little bar restaurant. There used to be a gypsy violinist who played outside and he was just really intrigued and said he wanted to study the violin and that's how it started. The Germans hadn't taken over yet, but there was a pro-German government. And so there were people who just walked in one day and evicted them from their apartment, and they were sent into a section of the city which was known as the Jewish ghetto. His mother had to sell things on the black market so that they could have food to eat. His dad was sent at various times off to labor camps to work. Uh, and then and towards the latter stages of the war, they went into hiding. They were liberated by the Russians, and then they came back to Arad. But then it becomes a communist country, so then they're behind the Iron Curtain. After the war, Tibor went to Budapest. He was 13, going on 14. He studied at the Liszt Academy, and he excelled. And the teacher said, you know, your next step would be to study with this teacher in Paris. And his name was Benedetti. He was a stateless person, basically. So on a forged passport, he studied at the Paris Conservatoire. He won the Premier Prix and the Chamber Music Prize. The next step, obviously, was to continue his studies. And the best teacher that he knew about and that his teacher in Paris knew about was Ivan Galamian at Juilliard. He didn't speak a word of English when he came to New York, not a word of English. He and Galamian spoke French, but he determined that he was going to learn 10 or 15 English words every day. One year he was invited to Tanglewood on a scholarship and he was the concertmaster of the Tanglewood Orchestra and won the Yasha Heifetz Prize. He gets his artist diploma from Juilliard and Hans Spieger, the conductor of the Kansas City Orchestra, goes to New York to audition people for the job of concertmaster. He gets the job. He becomes the youngest concertmaster in the country when he's 23 and he's drafted into the Army. He served six months basic training and then six years in the reserves. In 1961, he applied for citizenship, which he got in one of the happiest days of his life. He also won the National Federation of Music Clubs Award. And that was a biggie. My parents met through my grandmother, actually. There was a ritual director at the Beth Shalom Synagogue whose name was Abe Meth and they were planning a Hanukkah program. And of course, they asked Tibor if he would be part of the program. Tibor said, yes, but I need to have somebody who can accompany me. I can't just do it solo. And so Abe said, I have just the right person. And that was my mother, Rose Levine. He started to come over and practice at her house. And my mom's picture was up on the wall. And he asked who this beautiful girl was. She wrote me a letter and said, how would you like to meet the new concertmaster of the orchestra? She arranged for it to be when I was home for a winter break. I opened the door and that was it. So my mother was the matchmaker. We were at the Marlboro Music Festival, the summer that Pablo Casals was there for part of the summer. And that was just, I think, the most exciting time of my, my life. We had our first child, Danielle, Ellie, and then in 1970 came the twins, Mira and Serena. Thank God there was the Hebrew Academy that we could send our children to, that they could have maybe the best of both worlds. They could have the American, you know, dream and the secular studies, but they could also have the Jewish part and the Hebrew language. He wanted us to be able to do everything that, you know, that he couldn't do. Um, that he wasn't allowed to do. He ate up everything about mm -hmm. the school. He just loved coming to school. He would come and perform, and he also came to all of our performances. What I remember growing up is he was usually in the room or in the next room practicing while we were playing, and then he would come in and play games. He was terrific. He was totally hands-on. Coming from a family where the five of them survived, but much of the extended family did not. He clung to every opportunity to be connected to family. 
He enjoyed the blessings on Friday night at Shabbat where he'd put his hands on his daughter's heads and give them that blessing all the way until he couldn't do it anymore. He always did, always. you know, always did the kiddush. He always said Havdalah every Saturday night, no matter how late it was. We always had Shabbos dinner. We knew if we were coming back from going out and if he was coming back for a concert, we were all going to convene. By 1982, he had the symphony and he had the quartet and he had the conservatory of music. He was devoted to his students and they were devoted to him. He would give his all to working with them and helping them grow. There was a whole succession of wonderful pianists from the conservatory that he worked with. But the Klausner cast duo was very special to him and his relationship with Richard. In the last 10 years, we really made it a point when there was just more time mm -hmm. to get away as a family, and we decided we were going to embark on national parks. One memory I have very distinctly was we were in Sequoia National Park amongst the giant sequoia trees. You come out in the morning and it's a beautiful, gorgeous summer day and there's Tibor with his talus and tefillin in kind of peace and quiet because it was early. He was an early riser and so he was out doing his daily prayers and if it had been the middle of a city street he would have been the same way. He just knew that that was part of what centered him as a person. Whether it's because he didn't have a childhood or because he did live through things that most children don't live through, that he appreciated everything that he had. Every little bite of food, every little flower, every uh, moment that he had with the children and the grandchildren. I believe that Hyman Brand Hebrew Academy is honoring Tiberius Klausner because of his commitment to education, to Judaism, and to family. He marveled at the education that students at our school got to experience. And he wanted everybody to take the most out of it that they possibly could and to, to have a zest for life um, because he had a zest for life that was really infectious and inspiring and amazing. <laughs>